بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبینا محمد وعلا آلہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد So what about traveling <coughs> while fasting? Often we have the necessity to travel while fasting. And some people travel quite often. So they need, uh, it, and it may happen during the holy month of Ramadan. <coughs> and so, what is the ruling regarding if there is some difficulty regarding fasting. So we're going to read a, a couple of ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam regarding this issue. In the first hadith, and was, we've talked about it before, we've discussed this. <clears throat> عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله تعالى عنه قال كنا نسافر مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فلم يعب الصائم على المفطر ولا مفطر على الصائم رواه بخاري ومسلم very beautiful and important hadith in this hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu said We used to travel with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he didn't consider it bad the people who fasted over the ones who who broke their fast and vice versa letting us know <clears throat> that during some of the travels with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam some of the sahaba would break their fast and some of them would continue fasting. And the Prophet ﷺ would allow both and not make inkar, not uh, be harsh with either party. He allowed for both. And this is because fasting, aslan in its, <clears throat> in its foundation or in its origin, is a ruksa. It is something uh, permissible, meaning in its origin, fasting while uh, F1. Fasting itself is the origin. Fasting itself is the origin. And fitr or breaking one's fast is the ruksa, meaning it is the thing that's it's made permissible. So the origin is that we fast during the month of Ramadan and so forth. But it is made permissible, it's a ruksa for us to break our fast. Especially if there is mushakka, if there is difficulty. And so this hadith right here The Prophet Sallallahu didn't make ankar, didn't uh, consider it bad, those companions who didn't take that, per that permissible thing. He did not make ankar of them. So that's very important because we see, even unfortunately according to some of the people, their madhab and the way they uh, deal with one another is they make strong ankar of one another over this issue. But the Prophet Sallallahu didn't make ankar over either party. Some of them fasted and some of them broke their fast. And he alayhi salatu wasalam allowed for both, letting us know it's from the sunnah taqriri, meaning those things which the Prophet Sallallahu allowed. So that's from his sunnah. 
So that lets us know that it is not an aib or it is not something bad or sinful or wrong uh, to, ha to break the fast or to continue fasting. So this shows us the permissibility to break your fast or, or, uh, during travel, that it is permissible. And that the iqrar of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the fact that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam allowed his companions to fast and break their fast during the travel shows us that both actions are permissible. That's what we gain from that hadith. Then we go to the hadith of Abi Darda. An Abi Darda radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, kharajna ma rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi shahr ramadan fi harra shadeed fi harra shadeed fi harra shadeed hatta in kana ahaduna li yud'u yadahu ala rasihi min shiddati harra wa ma fina sa'imun illa rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa abdullah ibn ruwaha Ruahu Bukhari was Muslim. In the hadith of Abi Darda, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, it shows us, this hadith is bayan, or it shows us the fact that it is permissible to fast during the holy month of Ramadan even when there is difficulty, even there, when there is mushakka. So this shows us that you, you're not forced to take that rukhsa. And we're going to talk about some of the difference of opinion regarding that. But look at what the, the, the asal is going back to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he did not make, was not harsh with either party. He allowed both parties and showed us it's permissible to do both. That even when you have difficulty, <coughs> Even when you have difficulty, that it is permissible to fast. And that's what this hadith is evidence for us. So, Abi Darda radiallahu ta'ala said, we were traveling with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam during the month of Ramadan. And it was severe and severe heat. Until one of us, it was so hot that one of us would put his his hands on his head uh, to for the severe heat the severe heat of Ramadan it was severely hot during this time and none of us were fasting except the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Abdullah ibn Ruaha radiyallahu ta'ala anhu showing us again that even when difficulty, so it was severely hot, but the Prophet Sallallahu fasted and he showed us. So for those people who say it's impermissible to fast, that is not correct. That it's impermissible to fast even when there's difficulty. Because it shows that it was, this was severe difficulty for the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. None of them were fasting except Abdullah ibn Ruaha radiallahu ta'ala anhu and the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam. And so his actions are the best, alayhi salatu wasalam, but showing us that both are permissible. That if there is, but if it is severe mushakka, if the severity is, is great, then it's better to take that rukhsa, and we're gonna see why in another hadith. But it shows us the most important thing is that it is permissible when there is difficulty to fast. But perhaps pertaining to the level of difficulty is where we may have some differences of opinion. Then we reach another hadith which shows us the, the ruling pertinent to traveling for the one who finds it difficult upon themselves. An Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal kana rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi safar Fara'a zihaman wa rajalan qad dhullila alayhi fa qala ma hadha qalu sa'im qala laysa min al-bir as-siyam fi safar ruwa bukhari wa muslim wa fi lafz li muslim alaykum bi rukhsatillah allati rakhasa lakum 
This is a beautiful hadith. And this shows us the beauty of fiqh and the beauty of the ahkam that the ulama have taken from this beautiful and complete deen, deen which comes from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this hadith illustrates for us the ruling of fasting while traveling when there's a great difficulty upon yourself. Not just a general difficulty, but a difficulty especially on yourself when it's severe. So this is showing us that the difficulty can be different levels, of course. So Jabir, uh, Jabir ibn, uh, ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he narrated, he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam during one of his travels noticed a crowd of people, a, a, a very strong crowd of people around someone. And uh, he, they were around a man who had become unconscious. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Ma hadha, what is that? Alayhi salatu wasalam. And the people said, he's fasting. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, it is not from piety to fast while traveling. And then in another narration in Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu said, it is upon you to take the, those permissible things that Allah made and made permissible for you, meaning the rukhsah and safar that you could break your fast if there's a great difficulty. In this hadith, as we mentioned, it's a little bit different. It gives us a little bit of, it gives us broader understanding of the first hadith, letting us know that it is permissible to take either the rukhsah or to fast during if it's you find difficulty but if there is shadeed difficulty like we see in the case of this <coughs> this man who had become unconscious and the people had gathered around him you know as, as he, he was shaded by the people he, he was so it had become so hot that the people were look you know were observing him because he was you know in that severe heat so it was becoming harmful for him. So then the Prophet ﷺ responded to the man saying it's not from taqwa to, to fast while you're traveling. Letting us know this, this man was traveling uh, with the Prophet ﷺ. They were all traveling together. What we learn from this hadith is that it is permissible to fast while traveling. And again, to, it's permissible to take the rukhsah to break your fast. And another thing we gain from this hadith is that fasting during travel is not from taqwa. But rather it's permissible. It's permissible. And the wajib of it is it, you know, it, it is not made wajib, meaning the traveler, it is not wajib upon the person who's actually traveling to fast. So they are excused. They can break their fast and they, or they can continue to fast as we've seen from these two hadith. But there's some other details and we're going to talk about, which is very beautiful from the ulama that gives us some, some, um, qayyud or some restrictions and limitations and some, some criterion for us to determine when it's better to fast and when it's better to break our fast. So we're going to talk about that. Another benefit of this hadith is that it is better to take the rukhsah from Allah, to take the permissible thing from Allah that Allah has made permissible when it, uh, if, if Allah is making it easy for you in your acts of worship. Okay, that it's 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 better to take that rukhsah. Okay, so it's better to go ahead, maybe in the situation of traveling while fasting, to break your fast. 
but there's some more details we're going to talk about. And in other acts of ibadah, for example, the uh, wiping over the khufain is, is a ruksa. You know, it's permissible. So that it is when a person is, uh, you know, they want to wipe over their socks, take that ruksa from Allah. You don't have to take off your socks and take off everything to make your wudu, but instead you can wipe over your khufain which is from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it's a ruksa, something made permissible by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to make it easy upon His servants to worship Him. And another benefit of this hadith the Shaykh mentioned was that it also shows, this hadith shows us that it's permissible for the people to gather around someone if something is strange as long as they are not uh, causing, as long as there's nothing harmful in their gathering around a person, to gather around them, you know, when they see something strange, to look at someone or something, it's an accident, as long as you're not causing harm to the person. So uh, this hadith illustrates for us that it's permissible to, to do so. The ulama, they differ, and without getting deep into the to ikhtilaf because the, there's, there's a lot of masail there and they bring their adilla. we're just going to try to be as concise as possible that one of the things we want to look at here is that if you have your by uh, practicing both these ahadith and, and other ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ that are sound authentic hadith that if your the difficulty and the fact of breaking your fast is the same, that it is not overly difficult with regards to fasting and so forth, it's it's e it's even. Then in that case, it is better to fast. And this is because for number for for three or four reasons. Number one, the first reason is because it was the action of the Prophet Sallallahu The Prophet Sallallahu in the first hadith, while his Sahaba radiAllahu ta'ala anhu majma'een, they broke, uh, they, they broke their fast while they were traveling, but the Prophet Sallallahu continued to fast, and Abdullah ibn Ruwaha radiAllahu ta'ala anhu continued to fast. So it shows that this is the better, better thing because it, because the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam did it. Another reason why it's better to continue fasting if the difficulty is the same as the ease is because one it being the whole, if it's the holy month of Ramadan so that way you don't have to make qada you don't have to make it up and you you fast the month of Ramadan with the rest of the believers another reason is that this also if by why it's better to fast is because it is sura fi bara'at al that it is by fasting in this situation that you are removing the obligation uh, that you have to do in the quickest possible manner by not having to make it up. You're fulfilling your obligation in the quickest possible manner. And the fourth reason the Sheikh mentioned is that it is easier on the person to fast the month of Ramadan than outside of the month of Ramadan while you're in the habit of it. So it's, it's better to fast in that situation if the harm, or not the harm, but if the difficulty and the uh, uh, ease is the same, then better to fast for those four reasons. But what if the difficulty is greater? So if the mushakka is greater than the harm, it's severe difficulty or what have you, or that you're going to have harm, then you should break your fast. You must take the ruksa, or you should take the ruksa. And perhaps, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, maybe there are times when you have to take the ruksa if it is going to cause you harm during your travel uh, if you don't take that ruksa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best 
And those are some of the benefits that we gain. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.